Hi students, welcome to another HSC chemistry video in the acidic environment series. In this one, we're going to look at nitrogen oxides in the atmosphere. So a couple of important things about nitrogen, um, nitrous oxides. Firstly, there's a number of them, um, and we will be having a look at these in a little bit of detail later on. They are just combinations of nitrogen and oxygen, and probably one of the most important ones is nitrogen dioxide, NO2. There are other combinations of nitrogen and oxygen, and this is often why we use the shorthand NOx, where, where X can be any number, if you like, which means the ratio of nitrogen to oxygen can change. So we have nitrous oxide as NO, uh, dinitrogen tetroxide for N2O4 nitrogen dioxide, which was the one we're having a quick look at here. This particular one is not a good one because it is uh, has a particularly nasty smell, and I guess more importantly, it irritates the mucous membranes in the respiratory system, particularly um, inflaming to the lining of the lungs. This can be a very um, important uh, pollutant for asthmatics or young children uh, if it is in sufficiently high enough quantities in the atmosphere. Because it is also an acidic oxide, and you've seen the um, equations, we've written them a couple of times between a nitrogen dioxide and water. And remember, of course, that uh, we can only balance this if we include both nitric and nitrous acid uh, in our equation. These are acidic uh, solutions and they can corrode metals or stone and other materials. So nitrogen dioxide is a bit of a nasty one. Um, nitrous oxides in general come um, from two main sources, natural sources and industrial sources. The most obvious thing to say, of course, is that nitrogen gas and oxygen gas make up around about 99% of the atmosphere. And so anytime there's air, these two gases exist in sufficiently high enough quantities for them to react with one another. So if we have a high energy source, so if we have high energy, then we have a very big chance for these two to react together. So um, N2, O2, both gases are producing NO2. Um, and two of them and two of them will give us a nice little balance. So um, this is what happens, of course, whenever we have a high enough energy source, lightning is the most um, highest natural form of energy that, um, that we can have. But this also occurs in things like blast furnaces, uh, in the burning of fossil fuels, in power stations uh, for power generation, even in things like unflued gas heaters and cookers and in internal combustion engines. So anywhere where we have a large amount of energy um, or a very small space and a, and a spark can actually ignite um, not just a fuel, but also combine the nitrogen and oxygen together to form one of these um, key oxides. Nitri uh, nitrous oxides in the atmosphere are a little bit of a problem. We've just talked about the fact that they can create a lot of pollution. They're particularly uh, a problem for asthmatics and also young children. They are a key component in photochemical smog, one of the things that you might want to add when you're um, answering questions about the impact of nitrous oxides in the atmosphere. They're also a component of acid rain through those um, equations we looked at before, uh, nitrous and nitric oops, oxides, uh, acids, and um, formed as a result of the solutions of nitrous oxides in water. Um, eyes and respiratory tract irritants, particularly in those mucous membranes, and also something that we will uh, look at a little bit later when we start looking at some of the changing levels, but the fact that the uh, nitrogen dioxide levels can actually change seasonally, um, particularly in the autumn and in the winter, and obviously that's a response to the increased use of heating. Thanks for watching.